What's up guys? We are back for another Black Series review, but today we're taking a look at something that is very much not a standard Black Series item. We are finally going to take a look at the Hyper Real Darth Vader, the start to this new line that Hasbro was working on. And I got a chance to mess around with this guy briefly at Celebration, so I've been a little bit more excited than normal because I had my hands on it what, five months ago at this point. So I'm pretty interested to see what's going on with the final production sample. And to start with, he comes in a pretty snazzy box. This thing is definitely a little stylized, so you can see it's it's not just a standard square. So you've got a bunch of shots of Vader all over the package, and then you've got a window along the side to actually see the figure inside, and then the back kind of gives you a rundown of what's going on with this thing from a technology standpoint, from what makes it different from a regular figure but it does have a big opening flap as well. So you can pop this guy open. It's got a nice Velcro seam there. And then you've got a shot of all the accessories. You've got product shots. And then you can see Vader a little bit better when he's fully illuminated inside the package. And uh, yeah, this thing looks pretty sweet in or out of the package, I'm expecting, because the box already gives a great presentation. But we're going to do it. We're going to pull this guy out. So let's get to it. Let's take a look. All right, and here he is out of the package, our hyper real Darth Vader figure from Hasbro. So there is definitely some interesting stuff going on here. There's really no other way to describe it than, yeah, this is an interesting figure because, well, he exists in obviously a scale that is quite different, very much outside of the norm, and he incorporates a lot of kind of Hot Toys-esque type of just aesthetics and those seamless bodies that are starting to pop up everywhere. So there's a lot of different stuff going on here. So he's a little bit off the beaten path. And I gotta say, as far as just taking him at face value for a Darth Vader figure, I really, really like this guy. And there's, there's a number of reasons why, but I think they just pretty well nailed a lot of the aesthetics when it comes to this guy. And playing around with this type of figure has been a lot of fun. Playing around with this seamless style body with the metal skeleton inside, it's just a different thing. It's not something that I'm used to. So it's been a lot more fun than just playing around with your standard action figures. So let's jump right in, see what this guy can do. He definitely does move differently than uh, just about any other figure that I mess with. So you've got, of course, as I've said a few times already, the seamless style body. So there's, there's really no exposed articulation. You don't see any joints on this guy. It looks like it looks like Darth Vader. It looks like a guy wearing a suit. And that's basically what they're going for. Underneath this is a metal skeleton. And he does move pretty well. Honestly, he might move better than Vader really should be able to. So that's not to say he's not hindered in some ways because the bodysuit does present its own problems, but he moves really well. So to start with, the head can look up pretty decently and he looks down a little bit. I think it can move a little better, but I'm not so sure that I can actually make it go. But he does look down a little bit, and then you can bobble side to side, and then there is rotation. So the head kind of sits up there pretty nicely. I don't have any issues with it. I think it, I think it moves well enough. I mean, it's Vader. He doesn't have a huge range of motion anyway. The arms go out, and then they can rotate at the shoulder. But when it comes to this kind of body, you have to actually take into consideration the fact that, well, you can't spin that arm all the way around because then you've got a mess going on with the kind of rubbery material. You've got a ratcheted uh, elbow swivel here, and then he does have a pretty nice bend. I've seen a lot of people say he only has like 90 degree bend on the elbow, but it goes up a lot better than 90 degrees. That's that's better than most normal figures. So there is a wide range of motion there. You've got a swivel at the wrist, and this thing's actually kind of hard to use because of how because of how it all fits together. You've got a really, really tight fit with the rubbery arm, and there is a ball peg that goes into the wrist, but it's so deep and there is no hinge on the actual wrist itself. When it comes to, when it comes to really articulating his hands, there isn't a great deal of movement there. Basically, you just swap the hands out to get a different pose. There is some articulation to the skeleton. It's just really hard for me to actually do it and make it work. So realistically, articulation is very limited to being quite low, almost non-existent when it comes to the wrist. You've got a twist at the waist. There's a ball peg down in here, and he does move backwards and forwards and then side to side. I have popped him apart a few times, moving him a little bit too much, so maybe keep that in mind, but he does move pretty well there. You've got legs that can go out, I don't know, pretty far. I'd say Vader's not going to be doing any normal high kicks. I do worry when I move this guy that I'm going to tear the body. I've had no real issues with anything like that, but 
you know, that's just my worry coming out and considering the fact that this guy is a little bit more expensive. I don't want to rip his uh, rip his suit off there. He can kick forward pretty good, but then you start to get a little bunch going on here and then he can kick back some as well. You've got a knee joint down here, which is pretty good. It's more than 90. And then you've got, you can rotate at the, uh, the boot down here because it's a different material, different piece. And then the ankles actually hinge really, really well. So you can kick them side to side and then they kick backwards like all the way and then forwards. There's not a great deal of rotation. It does rotate, but you're still gonna have to contend with the actual material moving because wherever you wanna rotate something on this figure, the rubber suit has to follow. So it's not that he is under articulated in any way. He actually does move really well. You just have a lot more to take into consideration when you're actually moving him because it is like you're moving somebody that's wearing a bodysuit. So in the same way that you are restricted by the own clothing that you wear, this guy is restricted because he has this suit, but I think it actually works really well, especially when some of those joints, like say the elbow, move far better than say a normal six inch Black Series figure. Now, I've obviously harped on about articulation quite a bit more than usual, but I think it is really warranted. When it comes to this figure, that's got to be one of the big points for this guy is just how he moves. And then next to that is definitely, without a doubt, the way he looks. And that's not even a not even a consideration on how big he is, because we will talk about his size. He is definitely in a league of his own in a very weird scale. But the way this figure is designed just really works for me. I don't think that I am even remotely 100% in on a line of these figures. I don't truly need a bunch of this type of figure. But I think Vader works well here. Seeing this figure, seeing him in this suit, I think it just works. Because when you take a, take a step back and think about Darth Vader, you think about a guy that is in a heavily armored, heavily padded suit who does have a little bit of restricted movement, and he just looks like the character. That's really what it comes down to, is he very much looks like Vader. And I really, really like the way that this seamless body works. I've not really messed with anything like this until now. I've, I think I've seen one previously, and I had a chance to look at this guy at Celebration early, but actually having a lot of time with it. This is the first experience for me. And I don't know that I think this is like the, the best thing ever when it comes to action figures, but it works, especially with a figure who is fully covered in a suit. So I think it looks really nice. You can kind of see that they gave the rubbery suit for the actual bodysuit, it's like I got a nice quilted texture which matches Vader's look. You've got the armor plates on the chest, on the shoulders. These actually move a little bit to allow for greater range of motion on the arms when you want to kick them outwards. You've got really, really sharp detail on the control box on the chest and then on the boxes on the belt. The crotch piece and the belt are a floating piece so you can actually, if you were to pop him apart like I have done by mistake a few times, that can actually come off. And then, of course, you've got more of the quilted texture down here at the thighs. You've got his shin guards, and then you've got the boots, which are also a rubbery material, but they're not, they're not exactly the same as uh, the rest of the bodysuit, but they're very, very similar in how they feel. The wrists and hands are a hard plastic because, again, they are a separate piece, and they fit into those ball joints that you have to swap in and out to get different poses. But I think he looks really, really good. I like the different, the different hues of black on the suit, from the soft goods to the armor plating to the bodysuit itself. I like the feel of this. I mean, I'm, I'm concerned over time how this stuff really holds up. You know, what are we going to see in a couple years from now? Is Vader going to be all wonky and, and nasty? But, you know, in the moment right now, I think this is a really cool type of figure. Again, it's not something that I need a bunch of, but it works really, really well for Darth Vader. Not to mention the fact that we have some pretty exceptional soft goods on this guy. I think the cape hangs just about perfectly on Vader. You can drape it around him. You can have it hanging backwards. You've, of course, got the inner cape and the, the bottom portion down here, the skirt piece almost. You've got the, the ribbons of it that run down the chest, which I'm a big fan of that look. I think it works really well. And it just looks nice. It bunches up well. The seams are nicely done. It hits the floor pretty much you know just right. It basically hangs just enough so that it kind of drapes on the floor with him. And it works. That's that's really what it comes down to. This bodysuit, this type of figure, it works really, really well for a character that is fully covered in armor, fully covered in a padded bodysuit. So I think, I mean, it's Vader. He's obviously the, the poster child for this type of 
experiment for, for Hasbro, but I think it worked and I think they pulled it off really well. I'm far more excited about this figure now that I have him in hand than I ever was, even after getting a, a taste of him a few months back. Of course, we have to talk about the head sculpt, even if it's briefly. It's Darth Vader. It is, of course, the Vader helmet, and I think they did a really good job on this. I don't have many issues with it. At one point, I thought it might have been misshapen or missized, but it definitely works on this body. I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. Paint on it is really nice. The lenses look good. It's got a great sheen. It's got a good luster to it, so it very much matches a lot of the armor plating on the figure. It matches the chest piece, the shoulder pads, and then, of course, the shin guards. So it's that Vader helmet that you kind of know, and, of course, the Vader helmet that you love, and I think they did a good job. It, it works well on this figure. It's sized pretty well, and it's got a good finish, so that's pretty much all I can ask for, and one well, we got it. Now, of course, we have to talk about size. That is literally and figuratively the big thing when it comes to this figure because, well, he's a big figure. As you can see, I've got him here standing next to the Black Series 40th Anniversary Vader, so, you know, arguably the best Vader that we've gotten in a very, very long time. And it's not like these are in, co in competition with one another. They don't scale together. They don't go together. You're not going to be mixing this guy in, but you can get a taste for how big he is. He is eight-ish inches tall. Of course, he is bulkier to compensate for that. I think that in a general sense, this works for Vader. I don't know that we need a ton of Star Wars figures that look like this or incorporate this style of body or are this size, but it works for Vader. Uh, I could probably get myself into buying a Boba Fett like this, maybe. Hasbro, take note. But I think it works well for Vader. He's uniquely his own thing. He can stand apart while still having that same kind of Black Series aesthetic. So it's not something that you're going to be throwing him in with all of your other figures. But he does work here, and you can just get an idea that he he's a big figure. There is a lot of plastic or rubber or whatever it is and metal underneath uh, going into this guy. Now, of course, this guy does comes with some accessories, and he's got a pretty decent spread, honestly. The, the big one, literally, is that he comes with a floor panel type of display piece that is kind of reminiscent of the centerpiece figures because it has pegs underneath the bottom that you can pop out, and it's got holes you can put them in. It also comes with, uh, with this little fella here, and I believe that this is so that it can connect to the Luke figure because he's coming and he's going to have a base as well. So you've got the base that you can use with him. You've also, of course, got the lightsaber, so you've got a hilt here which can clip onto his belt and then you've got a blade here so it's it's a decent size lightsaber pretty good he can hold it in his gripping hand it's really loose in this hand right out of the box i might need to reshape that one a little bit but he does come with some other hands as well he comes with an additional seven hands in we've got two here already so you've got a fist hand you've got a gripping hand you've got another gripping hand you've got another fist and then you've got two pointing fingers here for either hand. You've got a kind of force push or force choke almost kind of hand, larger open palm, and then you've got the more, you know, crooked finger type of force choke. The more stereotypical force choke pose for Darth Vader. So I'm probably going to use this one at some point. But then you've also got this big fella right here. So you've got the explosion type of blast effect for when he's blocking a, a blast with his hand. And it has a hand and it just pegs into this display piece here for the effect. And of course you just pop these hands off and on. They do have a little ball peg in there and you can swap them. They are a little tight so you might have to tug more than you're, than you're used to but they'll pop on and off pretty well. So I'm really, really excited for this one. I don't know that it's going to be a permanent display, but I love getting effect pieces, and I think this looks really, really cool. I like the, the slightly blue hue to this plastic. It works really well. But you've got basically all of the Vader hands that you need to complete just about any pose for this guy. So overall, this is actually a really cool toy. Again, I've kind of said it a few times, I don't think that we need this as a line. Like, I'm just not sure this is something that everybody was clamoring for, but having it in hand, it is still a cool toy. Like, there's no denying it. This is a fun thing to play around with. It poses well. It looks good. It's a little more imposing because it has more room on the figure itself for detail, so Vader looks a little more menacing than usual. 
I just like it. I think it's a fun toy. I think it works well. It comes with a lot of stuff. It's just not something that I want a million of. Like, if this was a one-off, I would be perfectly happy with getting just a Vader and never getting anything else. Although, of course, like I've already said, I would take a Boba Fett. I'm not really interested in the Luke, but this thing was a cool figure. Uh, I would urge anyone who's even remotely interested to at least take a look at it, because it's probably a lot cooler than you expect. It's got different stuff from your average action figure the fun weirdness of the seamless type body, the metal skeleton on the inside, and just something a little bigger than, than your average Black Series figure. So yeah, it's a cool toy. That's about it. So that's going to do it for this look at the Star Wars Black Series Hyper Real Darth Vader. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time.